Hi, I'm Stephen Hamp from Archery Supplies and today we're going to look at the Obsession Final Pro Compound Bow. Now Obsession, is, Obsession has been around for a number of years. It start, well, it's made in America in a small country town, Jefferson, Jeffersonsville. Population of like 200, I'm not being thing. It's a very small little town. Now the design of the bows came from the original designer of Bowtech, so they share a lot in common with like Bowtech and Elite bows. But what they did different was custom bows. And this here was one of them. They had this amazing paint finish and this is the green. It was like a what you'd expect out of a car booth. Fancy paints, different color cams, different color strings. So you can customize your bow and it really didn't cost you any extra. And I thought that was a cool element of the bow. Um, they had a few different cams, which for me made it confusing, confusing to sell because they on different bows they had different cams. Some were modular like this one, some were rotating modules. And this is a binary cam, some had um, yoke systems, so they had different cam systems and some were draw length specifics, made it a little bit confusing for the seller, if not for the buyer in my view. The pricing was very good, um, they competed really well in the, in the same sort of price point as all your major companies, but they didn't have the money behind them of the big brand names like Hoyt and PSE and Bowtech and all the other big ones. So they kind of were a small company. Now recently they've been purchased by the owner of Martin Archery. So they were friends or something and he decided to buy the company. He's moved the whole company Martin down to the Obsession plant. So Obsession and Martin are going to be made in the same plant. So this is, we're going to show you the latest bows and I've got four of them behind me um, to open up and show you what they look like. Um, now, with the 2021 bow, um, Obsession have not updated their website. So it looks pretty much the same, and maybe it's being updated now, but when I was doing this review, it hadn't. So things that are gonna be different, see this, this is a wood grip, um, and the cams are different. So let's take a look. Now this is the red. So the first thing you're gonna notice is the paint's finished, is finished, is different is the finish is different from before this looks very much like a powder coat finish it's a dull color and it looks quite hardy but it's not the high gloss metallics that you're getting before i think i ordered this cam this bow with red cams it came with black cams um, it's now got a yoke system and the cams are very similar to what you'd see on the PSE bows, but they're significantly larger. So I'd expect this to draw quite smooth. The limbs are a Barnsdale, not Barnsdale, a cotton glass limb, which is what you see on all the, all the companies. Um, rotating modules. And I'm just checking out what type of module it is. It looks almost identical to a PSE. Um, in the shape of the module. You can see on the PSE module it's adjustable here, on the Obsession it's fixed. So this, will, this spot here will hit the strings. But it's a straight rotation of the module. And you've either got one, two, maybe three spots to move. You do not need a bow press to do that. The cable guard is a carbon rod with a roller slide here. Kind of similar, the same as what you'd see on your PSEs. A basic string stop. Um, these are a bit different. Um, what do you think? These are the bushings that go into the bow. Um, you can see they would go in with a spanner and here. Um, so that's a bit different. The pockets um, are a kind of a machined metal pocket. There's no locking facilities. And on some bows, you'll have a little bushing in here, which this limbok goes in to make it easy to wind down the bow. I think the stats on this bow roughly are about 38 inches, very, draw, very adjustable on draw length. So hopefully I'll be able to pull up those stats. Um, two lower mount cable, cable two lower mount stabilizer positions there and there, which is very, very low. 
I really like the limb dampeners on the Obsession. They're big, they lock in well, they don't move. They are fairly expensive, but they are quite nice and they come with the, they come with the bow. So, I don't know, what do you think about this paint? They've also changed the grip here from metal, sorry, from wood to rubber. Um, sometimes these are sort of movable. Um, when I say movable, they're put on with sort of a 3M tape and this gets a little bit of movement in the grip. Um, the balance on the bow, it's top heavy. So that means when you, this is a target bow, when you add your big target stabilizer to the end, it'll balance up well. That's pretty common with most of the target bows in today's market. Um, to me, this bow is very much aimed at the PSC Supra. Um, as far as the specs, price points about the same, adjustability is about the same, the weight's about the same. Um, so you've got to kind of go, do I prefer the Obsession or do I prefer the PSE? The equivalent Hoyt bows are going to be more expensive. The equivalent Matthews bow is more expensive. Um, the Elite Result, top of the line Elite Target bow, more expensive, about the $1,800 mark, but it's kind of interesting because it's cheaper than the equivalent Matthews and Hoyt's. Um, but this is a price point down. This is squarely aimed at the PSE Supra. Um, I like the cam system here, nice and deep. Um, the strings look good. There is no serving here where it goes through the cables. I think it should have serving there. With my PSE Supra when I first got it, it didn't have serving. I didn't have a wear issue. I've still got the same set of strings on it two years later. Other people will get wear over this cable slide, so bear that in mind. So with that, let's open up the other final pros. Now when I ordered these bows, I was expecting the shiny colours. And I've obviously got no idea what I'm going to get, so let's have a look what this looks like. Right, so this is the green. Now the green looks very much like the Sour Apple from Elite. Um, the green, I really like it. I like it better with green cams, but because can't be choosers. Um, that looks quite nice. I don't mind that color. Now one of my problems, one of my problems, with these target bows and now a lot of target shooters are going for the dull finish like this and not the shiny anodized finish is your accessories now don't match so if you've got an axel sight which is green it's a different color green than this it's going to be a shiny green um, the reds are different red to the axel sights to the red accessories that will be pretty standard on all your um, accessories so just bear that in mind that green and green like it'll look okay, but it won't match exactly like it used to. So this is the purple, quite a nice purple, and this grip here, just there is all sticky from the tape, as you can kind of see it. I think that's, you can see here how it's kind of risen up, um, and this side here it's a bit, you can feel it moves. Like you're probably going to wrap tape around it or something, but it's, it's just a bit disappointing when you pull it out and it's like sticky. 
anyway I like the color the purple it pops it's going to probably match quite nicely with your XL accessories if you got purple um, and purple has now gone out as a fashionable color from all the bow, bow companies so before two years ago purple was really popular PSE everyone was carrying purple now purple's gone out as a color greens more more is a bigger color whites um, your like your navy greens navy greens your army greens your grays your stones are becoming more popular tans are becoming popular whoa I love red cams I can say I've always wanted a bow with red cams So this is the red cams. Now I can say, as I said, I always wanted a bow with red cams. And I think that goes back from the movie Trinity, where she shoots a black bow with red cams. The bow in that film was um, an AR bow, which was made by PSE. Um, really liked the bow. There was only a few of them kind of made, quite rare. Um, but I really like that red cam. It would be enough reason for me to shoot one of these bows because it just looks i think this just pops it looks nice i'll see these little holes here on the draw stops you can use those to attach your drop away rs to but um well this is the and try and zoom up really close see there's a gap between the bushing and the riser and there is also I don't know if that's going to be an issue for you it wouldn't be an issue for me but I'm not that fussy so I think the bow looks good um, and with that we're going to set one up and have a shot and see how I shoot with it okay so we're here to, to try the draw cycle we're really close to the target one one or two meters away always if you get a bow wind the bow down first off in bow poundage I don't do that for this test because we're trying to compare 60 pounds with 60 pounds see what they feel like this bow is set at 28 and a half it is rotating modules but that's how it came set from the factory so that's how I'm going to shoot it um, and just see how it feels in the draw cycle see if it feels long short um, the sun is setting so I don't know how it'll go with the chronograph um, the arrows I shoot is a 327 grain arrow it's a gold tip velocity it's a 400 spined arrow with with 90, 90 grain points so to start off with the bow I'm going to say the bow feels a bit lighter than some of the other bows and the Supra it may not be it just feels that way so we draw it kind of feels it feels heavy for that first bit and then it, it's starting to feel a bit lighter. Now these limbs here, these are to reinforce the limb tips if you dry fire the bow. The cable guard is like the PSE Supra, but on the PSE Supra it's actually carbon. In the PSE um, Citation, it's actually um, stainless. This is an alloy. So same sort of design. The roller, roller slide is the same sort of design, but you'll see here these are red on the PSE, it's black. So it's very, very similar. So let's just try the draw cycle. So it feels quite actually easy at this point. It's now starting to get in the valley. Get, oh, there. Drops, clunks right in. So let's just take the shot. Oh. 286. So different to the Hoyt Prevail, which I just shot so different to the citation and very different to the supra so it kind of builds up and then it's getting you feel it slowly in the valley and suddenly it hits the valley and it feels like it's about 90 percent let off so it does feel super easy when you're back there in the valley um when you shoot the shot it feels slow and i'm talking super slow it feels like whoop. And 286 is actually not too bad. I just shot the um, Hoyt um, Invicta 
Invicta with the DCX cam. That shot 277 feet per second. Much harder draw cycle. Much tighter valley. Um, but this... The quite quiet to shoot. No vibration after the shot. So let's just take another one. So same arrow. Two eight five. You feel more. When I say vibration, you feel more vibration in the strings after the shot. Um, than some of the other bows. I'm not sure why because it does have the string stop here It's not like it's vibrating your hand because it's not um, It feels slower it Feels much easier to shoot. I mean, it's like I mean, I just shot the prevail and I'm like That <laughs> the look it's like whoa, this is gonna be hard. This just feels like oh no, It's just like easy. No don't know how well I'm going to shoot with it, but it feels very easy to draw, it feels very easy to aim. Like, it's just easy. Like, you can see I'm not, like that's 60 and it's like, that's peaking there. And obviously I twisted my hand when it went off. That was 305. But, it's one of the problems with shooting back tension, you don't want to. Um, so this is a VAP, 350 with 140 grain point. You don't want to, Move your, <laughs> move your wrist when you're shooting and that's why you always want an arrow in the um, bow when you're shooting it two six seven okay so my summary of that easy draw cycle because it's got big cams. Hasn't got the speed, but it feels easier. It's got a much bigger valley, like much longer valley, much greater let off. I don't know what the let off is. A lot of those target bows I mentioned, the Supra and the um, Hoyts are running like 60 to 70 to 80% let off. This feels like 90. It's probably 80, but it feels like 90. Yeah, just, you feel like you're holding nothing when you're back there. It just feels easy to shoot. Um, I would probably like more pressure back there when I'm actually aiming. Don't ask me why, I just don't. If you watch my video of me shooting the Prevail and, and the Citation, it's just like this arm just rips back when I shoot. I feel like it's a bit dead when I shoot this because I'm just not holding much. Um, no, when I fitted the arrow rest, you'll see there's two arrow holes, you'll see there's a Plenty of room there to fit a second um, Allen key to stop it moving. Really like that feature. Um, the grip um, feels about the same. Doesn't feel quite as wide as the. Doesn't feel quite as wide. Feels a little bit wider than the Hoyt. Feels narrower than the PSE Supra. Um, it's a very much the same sort of shape as the PSE Supra. So if you sort of feel like it's, a, feels a bit like a Supra. It feels like an easier Supra. So if you if you shot a Supra and you want a slightly easier draw cycle, slower, um, then this is this would be right up your alley. But it doesn't have that adjustability in let off, which I would like. Now I don't know if Obsession have that as far as a feature. Um, I would that's one thing I kind of like which I should probably look up the way the cams the way the yokes wrap around here this is exactly the same as the PSE Supros and with all the same PS with all the PSEs now use this sort of yoke system here where it wraps around and then pulls off which I think is what you'll see on the Dartons and there'll probably be some other bows like it um, the strings on this bow the America's best um, just there um, so with that, we'll take it inside and shoot 18 meters and see how well I shoot. Okay, so I've sighted the final, final four. Um, final four, sounds like basketball. Um, final pro four in 
at 18 meters. I've shot three shots. Um, they're slowly left and I've moved my sights um, accordingly. They seem very consistent. Um, I find the bow very easy to shoot. Uh, easy to draw, easy to aim. I'm getting no movement with the pins. I'm getting nothing, it just plops away. It probably feels like a 55 pound bow to shoot. Um, very different to the Hoyt Invicta and the PSC Citation that I've shot before, the last two reviews I did, um, where those bows were very hard, uh, very hard to draw. Now I'm going to make some points here, you're going to see the paintwork down here is not, the green's kind of faded here, I think the green's faded here, um, so the, pa the paintwork's not as sharp as some bows, they're probably sharper than others. Um, some, some of the Matthews had pretty average paintwork. The grips um, here, where the grip is, it's stuck on by tape. There's a bulge here under the under the grip, just there. Um, I can my hands are all a bit sticky from that two-sided tape, which has been used to put those um, things in, which is a bit disappointing. But the bow is nice to shoot. I feel like I'm going to shoot it well. So let's shoot some arrows and sort of see how it, see how they shoot. Like, I assume that went in the middle. The difference between this and the Prevail, which I literally shot half an hour ago, is like chalk and cheese. They're both 60 pound bows. One's 29 inches, one's 28 and a half. This feels a little bit short for me. The, the Prevail felt a little bit long. Now I've got two PSE forms. One's on 28 and a half, one's on 29. I really can't tell the difference. So, but the draw cycle, I don't know if you can see it when I draw, this is significantly easier for me. I'm not getting the shakes. I'm not getting the pin movement on the target that I got with the Hoyt. And you know, I feel like I got massive pin vibration, vibration pin movement when I shot the PSE Citation 36, but it shot amazingly well, like best group ever. But I felt like I was moving around a fair bit with that bow. Because it felt, it was so fast, I felt like I was getting a fair bit of movement. That one's probably average, but it wasn't like it wasn't a bad shot. No, I was thinking, come on, go, 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 and it didn't go off. And when I am shooting, I'm getting a little bit of that when I shoot. The grip, the grip's all right. I'd probably wrap some rubber around, like some hand tape around it. Um, for some reason, it's kind of, I can kind of feel it at the top of my thumb, kind of in the arch. Maybe I'm not healing the bow like I do. I'm just feeling it there a bit, um, where I don't with the other bows. But maybe that's just getting used to the grip. This bow feels very easy to shoot. Um, I don't know if it's a higher let off. The, it feels very solid when you're back there, but you just feel like you're holding nothing. So you feel like you've got all day to shoot the shots. I'm just getting a little bit of that when I shoot. Now this is my hand grip there. That's how my hand grip is. And it's kind of just in that point there. It's hurting my thumb. And that's really interesting because I haven't had that before. 
and I feel this grip is the same as pretty much every bow made. Um, it's kind of interesting why I'm getting that. I'm not sure why I'm getting it. It's not that the it's not that the grip is uncomfortable. It, it's, it is comfortable. It's when I'm shooting the shot, I'm getting this happen when it comes out of the bow, and that's what's just hurting my hand a little bit. Very interesting so when I'm back there the bow is very stable and holding in the center and I'm thinking about shooting the elite result and the other bows the super focus and those sorts of bows with the elite result you can adjust the let off you can adjust limb stops cable stops it gives you that massive um, adjustability um, obviously you've got the draw length adjustment but you can adjust the cable let off the cable stops the limb stops you can change the let off to whatever you want and the grip just feels a little bit different. Um, the let off on this feels greater than the Elite. The Valley feels more pronounced than the Elite and more pronounced than the other bows. Now I shot the uh, Matthews TRX either 36 or 38 the other day. That's got a quite a, quite a smooth draw cycle um, right the way through. This is a more, I'm gonna say traditional, where it drops into the valley. It's sort of like a bit of a valley there, bit of a valley. It's got some length in the valley, so it's easier. If you were to let your pressure off, it's not gonna rip out your shoulder. Last one. Very interesting, like, yeah. Let's go in and see what their grip looks like and sum it up. Well, up at the target, it's obviously not my best shot of grip up shot, but definitely better than the Hoyt. And it felt significantly easier. Like, you know, I don't think there's an eight, that might be an eight. There's some arrows which are touching and it's close. It's kind of what I'd normally shoot, this kind of group. Like I can't get my hand around it, but it's not bad. It's an average kind of group, it's not startling, it's not terrible. That's what this bow felt like. It felt like it was easy to shoot. It felt like that grip was, the, like the pressure point was a bit weird. Um, these little rubber things here, I think they could improve that, maybe put wood grips on or something. I would rub. I would wrap hand grip around this to make it more secure. Um, I would like less, I would like the ability to just let off. So whether it's different modules that Obsession produce, I would like that ability. Um, with Obsession in the past, I'm pretty sure limbs have been the same. With Obsession in this model, the limbs are different, different poundages, um, which is the same as what PSE does. And with the cams, like if you were to tune this by the cams, you would move the clams left or right. Now on this side here, you can see the cams almost up against the limb. So you've really got no way to move this bow, this cam system to that side. You can only really move it to that side. Um, so you can really only move it to the right. You can't move it to the left. So if you're getting a left tear, you'd be in problems. Um, now Obsession used to paper tune their bows. Uh, from the factory, um, I don't know if they still do. It used to be when they gave out the instruction book, there was a piece of paper to say it was shot by someone or other. 
and there was a paper tear of the bow to show it had been tuned. Now that was pretty cool. Um, I like that. I don't know if they still do it. I obviously did the unboxing. I didn't see it in there, but it might be with the instructions. So, um, so that's pretty much it. So my things I would like to see improved on the Final Pro, I'd like to see the little things added here. So you can see, um, so it bolts into a bolt into the, into the riser. Um, it would improve winding up and winding down. If you were to strip out the riser, it's a simple procedure then to replace it. Um, I would like the specs on how far out you could wind this bow. I think you could improve the limb pocket design. Um, not that I'm a hater of this design. It's, it's quite a simple design. I just think you could do more with it as far as um, pulling the limbs, locking the limbs in place. So there's some other limb designs on the limb pocket designs in the marketplace that kind of lock the limbs in place a little bit. I don't think that's going to affect your accuracy. I just think that as a top of the line bow, that's what other manufacturers have and that's probably what you'd like to see. Oh, look here. Uh, on the other bow that I pulled out, they had the Obsession limb dampeners in, which are far better. This has the limb saver dampeners, not as good. Um, so that's an interesting, obviously a late change. I would like some specs printed on this bow to say what the draw length is, like it, like what it's from and to. Because if this is hanging up in a shop, it's really not telling the customers, customer much at all. Except this is a 28 and a half inch draw length. What does it go from and what does it go to? It's currently set on 28 and a half, but where does, what's the ranges on it? What's the range in poundage? What's the price point? What's the speeds? What's the axle axle length? What's the brace height? I would like all that stuff printed on one of these cards. Um, so if you've got these hanging up in the shop, like it looks pretty good. This bow looks nice hanging up on the wall. It'd be nice to be hung up with all that information on the wall. Now for my shop, we'll probably produce that in a brochure to hang behind this bow when it's displayed in this new shop. Um, one of my staff will do that. Um, because you want the cust customers come in, they often look around. You want them to go, oh, that's interesting. Look at the price point. I'm pretty happy with 1400. That looks pretty good. It's made in the USA. It's got adjustability, looks pretty. You want the bow to sell itself rather than um, a salesperson to be selling that bow because the salesperson will probably sell the same bow every time. Um, overall, I like the bow. The grip was a bit, I'm not sure why I'm, why the grip was different and I'm really going to have to shoot some other bows. I don't know if it was left over from shooting the Hoyt. That hurt my hand. Um, and the paint work just had a little couple of spots there where it faded. Um, but besides that, I like the bow. I think it's easy to shoot. Um, Obsession has been rock solid as far as a company. As, as far as I don't think I've had any warranty claims in the three or four years I've been selling them. They've been very rock stable um small axles um a lot of the industry is going to the fatter axles now um so yeah so a lot of the industry goes to the fat, fat axles because a lot of people think that the limbs do that whether they do or don't i don't know it looks like they do that on a lot of the bows so they put fatter axles in which stop that um but overall i like the bow like the colors like the options, I love the black with the red cam. Love that. Um, but I don't mind the screen. The screen looks kind of cool. Um, not a bad bow to shoot. And my final thing would be, if you shoot a Supra or you've shot a Supra, this is an easier version of the Supra to shoot. That'd be my summary of it. So I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. Thanks for watching. Bye.